Well, this person doesn't look like she's doing very well. What's going on? Any guesses as to what today's tutorial might be on? Any guesses? A lack of something that might lead to her not moving properly? All right, here's a clue. That's right. Joints. But more specifically, we're going to be looking at synovial joints and the types of synovial joints in your body. So let's get to it. We're going to be starting by looking at what is a synovial joint, including its structural anatomy, and then we'll dive into looking at the types of synovial joints, starting with ellipsoid joints, saddle joints, pivot joints, hinge joints, gliding joints, and finally, ball and socket joints. And then we'll wrap up with a clinical scenario to illustrate why these joints are so important. Synovial joints are one of three main classifications of joints in the human body. But before we get into that, I just want to first define what a joint is. So what's the definition of a joint? Well, a joint itself is where two bones meet. And some joints allow movement and some don't. So one way to classify joints is based on the range of motion allowed at that joint or that can occur at the joint. The other way is by the type of tissue that holds the bones together. So in terms of the first classification, synovial joints are capable of a large range of motion. And in terms of the second, a joint must meet a few criteria to be considered a synovial joint. So firstly, both bones forming the joint must be lined with hyaline cartilage at the articulating surfaces. Secondly, the joint must be enclosed within a capsule which creates the joint cavity. Within this joint cavity is synovial fluid which lubricates the joint. So let's take a look at these details a little bit more closely. So here's the classic example of a synovial joint, the elbow. And the image that we're looking at now on the screen is a sagittal section through the arm, the elbow and the forearm. And over here we have the trochlea of the humerus. And distal to that is the trochlea notch of the ulna. So let's revisit our first criteria, that the articular surfaces must be lined with hyaline or articular cartilage. So we can see hyaline cartilage on both the humerus and the ulna. Next, the joint is enclosed within an articular capsule, and the articular capsule is highlighted in green right now. So for an external view, the articular capsule can be seen in the image on the right of the screen. And this capsule is made up of fibrous connective tissue and provides a lot of the strength and stability for the joint. On the deep side of the articular capsule is a membrane called the synovial membrane. And the capsule, lined by the synovial membrane, helps to form the synovial cavity, which is very characteristic of synovial joints. The final thing to point out is that this cavity is filled with synovial fluid, which is secreted by the synovial membrane to keep the articular surfaces nice and lubricated. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and Atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full length video and master anatomy.